Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to get tactical, as we normally do. And the way we're going to do that is by testing a certain item. Recently I made a video on the 7.62x39 AR-15 and recommended changing three parts. One of those being this guy. That is a buffer. Inside of this buffer you have a few disc-shaped weights. And essentially what it does is rides back in the buffer tube and allows your bolt to travel back that direction. What is it going to do by adding weight to this? We're going to find out. Essentially, I'll be running a test. This is a mil spec buffer weight, and the reason I recommend changing this on a 7.62x39 or 50 uh, Beowulf or 450 Bushma Bushmaster or 458 Cellcom, any of these larger calibers, anything larger than a 223 uh, 556, five, you may want to consider getting this mil spec nonsense out of your face. Um, and I'll show you why. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my muzzle device in front of a ruler between roughly an inch space. Once it's in between that space, I'll fire three shots with the mil spec buffer weight and then measure how high up that comes. Now, after I do that, I will change this out for an H3 buffer weight and fire three more shots. And that way we can determine how much changing this weight or adding weight to your buffer will mitigate recoil at the muzzle. Uh, and we're just going to go from there because that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's get tactical. Okay, start, lock your bolt to the rear visually and physically ensure there's nothing in the chamber, correct? Let your bolt fold forward, use your push pin in the rear, and you're going to open it up like that. Now that it's open like that, come up here, and you see this little pin that's holding your buffer weight in, we're going to push that down until this slides out. And this is your mil spec buffer weight. Now, the difference between this and this new guy is this one is a few ounces heavier. And I won't go into why this is beneficial overall, but it does mitigate recoil hitting back on the stock. So, you'll just put that in and make sure it's locked in place. And this is the heaviest buffer weight. Um, because we're shooting a 30 cal out of the AR platform, I thought this would be beneficial, and I'd like to see. So, with the H1 buffer weight, as you can see, we got about half an inch of muzzle climb while firing, and we're going to see what that changes, what this will do to improve that. Okay, so now that we've done that, you can see essentially with a mil spec buffer weight shooting a 7.62x39 out of a 16 inch barrel, you get roughly at most a half inch of muzzle climb. And I did intentionally, well, I most of the time will fire offhand. I prefer to do that because I don't believe that a, a resting bench is going to appear randomly in a time of conflict. So I think it's important to do these tests offhand shooting. Um, so essentially it only cuts down the muzzle climb by a very, I would say insignificant degree, but what it does do that is immeasurable is take away from the recoil felt at the stock. Now the ability to stay comfortable and get back on target quickly is important. So I do think that the H3 buffer weight is an added benefit to any of these larger caliber uh, AR-15s. And not only that, but also if you have a, a short barrel pistol. Uh, like if you have a 223.556 that's a 5 inch barrel, this is something you may want to consider getting out of your face. I really think it is an important thing to do. Now other things that may benefit you greatly, and I have experience with changing them and it experience 
making a substantial difference in staying on target during rapid fire is a muzzle device. We'll do that another time, but for the time being, yes, I do think that this is a very easy way to mitigate some recoil and make your firearm more comfortable for your use. So I do recommend an H3 if you're using a larger caliber. It, it, it makes a lot of sense to me. And that's pretty much it. You have the measurable difference, uh, but like I said, what's immeasurable is how comfortable you are firing that. And I think that speaks more than, than I can. So with that being said, that's all I got for you. I mean, that's the easiest way to mitigate recoil without any tools or any skill whatsoever. You really could be a trained ape and get this done. So like myself. So that's pretty much it. I do appreciate your time. It was a real quick one, so a little, little different than what I normally would do. But, of course, I appreciate your time. And, like I always say, God bless the great state of Texas.